All right, so throughout the offseason, we've made a few videos talking about a few teams heading into this upcoming season. Expectations, biggest differences, keys to the season, that type of thing. With the Leafs, it's certainly different. If you're a Leaf fan, you know the drill. Same old early playoff exit, core four talk, Marner trade chatter that eventually dies down. It's been pretty Groundhog Day-esque for Leaf fans the past couple seasons. And because of that, I kind of want to shift away from that today and talk about another aspect of this team and its future, honestly, that I think is going to be pretty sweet and exciting. It's pretty rare for teams with 60 goal scorers, multiple players in the 100 point range, tons of elite talent in their primes. And then in contrast, you've got a, I'd say pretty significant portion of the fan base, myself included, who's more excited about the next wave of young Leafs coming in more than how many goals is Austin Matthews going to get in the regular season again. Don't get me wrong. I love watching this guy score goals. It's an art form. And I was fully along for the ride on the 69 goal season. And I enjoyed watching it, but especially with how he played in the playoffs, I'm far more interested in Matthew Nye's continued development. Easton Cowan's looking promising. He looks like he could be a diamond in the rough, and similar kind of thing for Fraser Minton as well. Yes, I'm that same guy in the regular season who's telling Leaf fans to enjoy how entertaining Leafs hockey is now compared to how it was in the post Sundin pre-Matthews era, and that's pretty much all because of the core four. They made Leafs hockey fun again, but I also understand why a lot of Leaf fans are like, oh my god, enough with the regular season accolades and individual goals and accomplishments. Let's focus on being better when it matters most. And look, from trading Marner to Riley to Tavares to dropping Felix Potvin in the Fountain of Youth, everyone's got their opinion on how to fix the Leafs. But outside of the core four, to me, the most interesting one has got to be the young guys, especially Matthew Nyes. Obviously, he's chief among them right now. This guy may not be a high-flying, high-skill, 30-40 goal scorer, 80 points. He might cap out as a 20-25 goal guy who gets you 40 or 50 points. But man, is this dude built for the playoffs. He steps up when it matters most. He uses that big body. Doesn't seem to get intimidated at all when the other team really starts to lay it on thick. He's still only 21, and the value he brings to the table is completely Completely different from 34, 16, 88. I'd argue it's a value that the Leafs desperately need more than another guy who plays like Matthews, Marner, Nylander. That's what really excites me about this player and separates him, I think. Then you've got Cowan and Minton. I know a lot of Leaf fans are really excited about these two, especially with how the lineup looks right now with Tyler Bertuzzi leaving for Chicago and free agency. If they're not ready to play in the NHL, that's fine. There are guys like Holmberg, Yarn Croak, Dewar who can fill roles and spots effectively. But if they are ready, there's definitely a window for one or both of them to make it. And there's some buzz coming about now. NHL.com is writing about how close Minton is. Similar stuff being talked about for Cowan as well. Look, I totally understand. When you think of adding pieces for playoff runs, you think of the vets. Tarasenko in Florida. Henrique in Edmonton. Cogliano in Colorado for their cup run in 2022. Corey Perry on like 16 different teams in five years. And the Leafs very well could be doing that as we approach the deadline. And it's not like they haven't done it with this core anyways. I mean, it was a different GM, but it was the same core. They did plenty of it. And you still have guys like Max Domi, John Tavares, Ryan Reeves around, but I'd be real fascinated to see the infusion of young, hungry, talented players there and see what kind of difference that makes. Yes, around the core four, but just to the lineup in general. And again, if it doesn't work out, you have or can go get other vets to come in and fill those spots. Just wanted to give my two cents on this. Wanted to talk about something outside of the core four and the Marner trade rumors that honestly I think could have a huge impact on this team. And let's not forget the Nick Robertson trade request as well. Where does he fit in all this? Leaf fans and just hockey fans in general, what are you most interested to see for the Leafs this season? I imagine quite a few are going to say nothing, <laughs> you know, just wake me up when it's game seven. I'm not tuning in till then. And I don't blame you, but for the rest of you, the diehards and the people who follow the team throughout the year, what are your thoughts? And let me know what you're looking for. In the three end screens right now, you'll have three longer form videos we did recently. Put a lot of time into those, so I would really appreciate it if you guys could check it out. Other than that, I hope you're having a great summer. Just hold on to those last couple weeks, and then we're going to be counting down to hockey season. Hey, first game of the year is October 4th, Devil Sabres in Prague. The season really gets going on October 8th, though. It's not that far away. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. You're awesome.